Hello, welcome to St George's Everton Online. Uh, it's great to have you with us today as we worship God through this amazing technology. Um, we're going to read a, a passage from the Bible and we're going to think a little bit about how it applies to our lives. Um, but let's begin our worship now. Let's invite the presence of God to be amongst us now. Wherever you are, whenever you're watching this, uh, invite the Spirit of God to come and lift your worship to him. Hear the words of Psalm 138. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise to you. I will bow down towards your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. In the day that I called to you, you answered me. You put new strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he watches over the lowly. As for the proud, he regards them from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will preserve me. You will stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand will save me. The Lord shall make good his purpose for me. Your loving kindness, O Lord, endures for ever. Forsake not the works of your hands. Well, let's sing together our praises to God now. Well, 
we're going to uh, turn now to the Bible and we're going to continue on looking through John's Gospel, which we have been doing since Christmas and will continue doing up until we get to Easter. And today we are looking at John chapter 3 and Jesus' encounter with a man called Nicodemus. Uh, Nicodemus was a Pharisee, uh, an important religious leader, a teacher of morality, a teacher of the Jewish law, a teacher about God. And uh, we're going to uh, turn now to the passage. So let's look at it together. It says, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus. He was one of the Jewish rulers. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. We know that God is with you. If he weren't, you couldn't do the signs you are doing. Jesus replied, What I'm about to tell you is true. No one can see God's kingdom unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. They can't go back inside their mother. They can't be born a second time. Jesus answered, What I'm about to tell you is true. No one can enter God's kingdom unless they are born with water and the Holy Spirit. People give birth to people. But the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised when I say you must all be born again. The wind blows where it wants to. You hear the sound it makes. But you can't tell where it comes from or where it is going. It is the same with everyone who is born with the spirit. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. Don't you understand these things? What I'm about to tell you is true. We speak about what we know. We are witnesses about what we have seen. But still you people do not accept what we say. I have spoken to you about earthly things and you do not believe. So how will you believe if I speak about heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven. He is the son of man. Moses lifted up the snake in the desert in the same way the Son of Man must also be lifted up. Then everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. God did not send his Son into the world to judge the world. He sent his Son to save the world through him. Anyone who believes in him is not judged, but anyone who does not believe is judged already. They have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Here is the judgment. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light. They loved darkness because what they did was evil. Everyone who does evil deeds hates the light. They will not come into the light. They are afraid that what they, uh, what they do will be seen. But anyone who lives by the truth comes into the light. They live by the truth with God's help. They come into the light so that it will be easy to see their good deeds. Well, there we have it. Jesus' encounter with Nicodemus. And um, I wonder if you noticed in there, we were in John chapter 3. We read from verses 1 to 21, which means we went through John 3.16, probably the most famous verse in the entire Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not die, but have eternal life. It's one of those uh, verses you see. Uh, plastered and stickers on cars and painted on uh, advertising boards uh, on roadsides uh, one that you see tattooed on people's bodies it's one of those really really famous verses it's so easy to remember and it so simply sums up what the Christian gospel is all about but you'll notice here that actually the verse isn't just sort of there as a saying it isn't just hovering around uh, as a as a meme or or a gif or you know it's not just something that has no context that verse actually comes within the context of this encounter 
of Jesus and Nicodemus. And by looking at it in this interaction, it helps us to understand what Jesus is talking about when he says the words in John 3.16, but also helps us to understand uh, what the whole passage is about. So this uh, encounter is Jesus meeting with a Pharisee, as we said, a, a teacher of morality, a teacher about God, someone who people look to when they were looking for answers uh, about God, about the universe, about what is right and wrong. And Nicodemus comes to him at night, which is really interesting. Um, and there's there's two kind of uh, things going on here. One, I think there's a sense in perhaps that Nicodemus is a little bit embarrassed about going to see Jesus, uh, that he's someone who is expected to know the answers uh, and he doesn't want to be seen going to speak to Jesus. Also, Jesus is becoming a controversial figure in the community. He's just turned over the tables in the temple. And so Jesus is perhaps someone that if you're a respectable, uh, popular, well-respected person like Nicodemus, you might want to be a little bit careful about being seen with. So he goes in the middle of the night. But also, um, as John always uses these little details to illustrate things, and the fact that Nicodemus goes in the night, in the middle of the night, is a sign, a symbol of Nicodemus's ignorance of his blindness, of his not understanding. He's in the dark. Even though he is a teacher of Israel, he does not understand who Jesus is or what he is about. And Jesus calls him up on this. He says, you call yourself a teacher of Israel, yet you do not know these things. And Jesus has this conversation where, with him where he says, in order to see the kingdom of heaven, you will need to be born again or born from above. Sometimes it's uh, translated as this idea that in order to see the kingdom of heaven, we need to uh, go back. We need to unlearn some of the things that we've learned. Um, all of us have ideas about God, which we have inherited, inherited from uh, the culture around us. Maybe we've inherited it from church, maybe. We have ideas about God based on our own experience of life, maybe uh, ex good experiences or bad experiences, which shape the way that we think about God. Um, and we very easily form wrong ideas, wrong impressions of God. Um, and Jesus has come, as we know, John keeps telling us, has come to show us what God is really like. And for Nicodemus and the other Pharisees, their ideas about God are getting in the way of them recognising who Jesus is and therefore what God is really like. They, they see Jesus, some of the things he does and some of the things he says and teaches and think, is this guy really from God? It doesn't fit with our ideas of God. And one of the things that we have to go through when we come to know God when we come to know God personally is sometimes we have to get past some of the ideas we have about God we have to let go of some of those beliefs and we have to see what God is truly like in Jesus and often it's things that we believe about God which aren't true which hold us back in our lives and in our lives of faith and so Jesus says, you need to be born again. In other, It's similar to what he says in some of the other Gospels, where he talks about uh, to enter the kingdom of heaven, you need to become like a little child. Now, by that, he doesn't mean become childish. But I think what he means is you need to see things with the fresh eyes. You need to see things clearly. And there's another thing that Jesus is driving at as well in his conversation with Nicodemus. And that's what he talks about in the second part of the chapter, where he talks about the idea of light and dark. He talks about the light coming into the world, but people preferring the darkness, not recognising the light, not coming to the light, because actually they want to stay in darkness because of uh their shame about the things they have done or sometimes their enjoyment of doing things which are they know are wrong sometimes 
we are held back from coming to God because either we are ashamed of some of the things that we have done in our lives or things that we are still doing or sometimes we don't come to God because we actually enjoy our lives and we enjoy a little bit of sin sometimes we enjoy uh, a little bit of reckless living we enjoy uh, those kind of things and we don't want God to spoil that fun and so we prefer to just stay away to keep to ourselves to stay in the darkness Jesus says first of all if it's something to do with shame we do not need to feel ashamed because Jesus wants to take away our shame and Jesus has taken away our shame through his own death on the cross and if it's something to do with the fact that we actually just really like our lives and we don't really want to let God in uh, we, you know we don't want him to disrupt the fun we're having whether that fun is good for us or not well Jesus asks us to think again first of all he, he will tell us that that isn't really life and actually ultimately living for ourselves will leave us uh, disappointed it will leave us empty uh, and uh, the life that he offers is so much more so much more vibrant it's so much more rich it's sustainable it's eternal is the word uh, it's it, it won't run out it won't leave us disappointed so jesus says to nicodemus whatever it is that's holding us back we need to let it go imagine being born again starting afresh whether that's a fresh mind in terms of we need to let go of some of our ideas about god whether it's a fresh conscience letting go uh, of some of the things that we feel guilty and ashamed about or, or whether it's a fresh start in terms of looking at what's important in our life and what we're living for and when we do all those things God by his spirit will shape our shape our minds shape our hearts and shape our lives to be like Jesus and to bring us into his presence and to give us his life that comes through a relationship with him the thing that Nicodemus I think struggles most about with Jesus and it's the struggle that the people in the Bible uh, in, in the Gospels particularly have with Jesus those who are struggling to believe in him they struggle to believe that Jesus is going to give himself away Jesus says here that he didn't come to be lauded he didn't come to give just gifts like santa claus but actually he came to be lifted up like uh the the the, the serpent uh he gives the example of moses but he's going to be lifted up and he is of course talking about here about being lifted up on the cross and it's through his death on the cross that he reshapes our minds he takes away our shame and our guilt. He gives us a new reason to live, the chance of a fresh start. And if you're someone who is looking for that fresh start, Jesus offers that to you today. So let's take this moment now to pray to him. let's pray Jesus we thank you that you came to live amongst us to be God with us and we pray that you came to be lifted up to die so that others might live and Jesus you recognized that there were things that get in our way that stop us that trip us up from receiving that life from accepting that you love the world so much that you came maybe it's the ideas we have about you that we've picked up from all around us whether it's perhaps our own guilt and shame or maybe it's our own sense of living for ourselves and enjoying too much the things of this world things that are passing and ultimately 
will that satisfy our deepest longings? And where we've made a mess of life, Lord, you offer us the chance of a fresh start. And wherever we're up to in life right now, Lord, we ask that you would send your spirit to renew us, to transform us, to shape our lives and our hearts, to release us from any bondage that is holding us back. prayer for today O oh God you know us to be set in the middle of so many and great dangers that by reason of the frailty of our nature we cannot always stand upright grant to us such strength and protection as may support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations through Jesus Christ your son our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We finish with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I leave you today with this final song. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in, oh, his love for me, oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free in me. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. to me his grace runs deep while I was a slave to sin Jesus died I am who you say I am You are for